unprecedented decline in nature threatening humanity. That's the conclusion of the first United Nations report on biodiversity. A million species are at risk from extinction, from climate change, overfishing and pollution. Some animal populations have dropped to the dozens. The vaquita, kind of porpoise, which is native uh, to waters off California, is down to an estimated 30. The Amur leopard, native to China and Russia, is just down up to 84. We don't have the picture for that, is it? There, there you have it, the Amur uh, leopard. Vultures may not be your idea of beauty, but they're a key part of the ecosystem. 11 of 16 species are at risk of extinction. Now, the report says that the species are dying off at an accelerating rate, but there's a chance to make a difference if action is taken immediately. And UN officials are pointing out that protecting diversity also means protecting human life on Earth. What this report is telling us is that protecting humanity means protecting biodiversity, because we human beings fundamentally depend on the diversity of life. We are part of this ecosystem, but we are not conscious enough of the extent to which we benefit from it. Joining me now is Ajit Niranjan. He's DW's environment reporter. Ajit, you've already read the report. It sounds very serious, but tell us first, why are these particular species at risk from extinction, a million of them? You're right, Amrita. It's one of the most comprehensive studies of life on Earth. And its main finding is that a million species are at risk of extinction, primarily through human activity. And you can see that in the way we've treated nature around us. The scientists are telling us that we've overfished oceans, we've raised rainforests, we've polluted waterways and poisoned our air. And the consequences of that is damage to nature that is on such a scale that scientists are comp comparing it the threat to humanity on the level of climate change. And I think that's such a big finding from today's report to say that actually this is biodiversity and species loss and damage to ecosystems is something that we need to take as seriously. And tell us a little bit more, Ajit, about what is the impact of losing these species? There are wide-ranging impacts of losing species, but one of the biggest, and I think one of the ones the scientists have highlighted the most in this report, is on our food supply. Now, food supply is dependent on growing crops and also on having healthy soil in which those crops grow. And what we've seen is that the number of different species that are providing our crops has plunged dramatically. So I think the UN, a recent UN report, a separate one, found that nine species of plant provide two thirds of global crop output. Now combine that with damage that we're doing to soil, the extinction of individual species such as fungi and um, earthworms and so on, and you have a clear picture where essentially our food system isn't necessarily going to be able to cope in the future with the damage being done to it. So Ajit, it sounds like that our very existence is under threat or humanity is under threat by the decline of these species. Can anything be done to arrest this decline? I think that's the good news, that the report makes very clear that actually this is something we can change, that we can turn this around, and that... But the problem with that is that it requires what they call transformative policy change. Now, they've listed many different areas in which they want governments to pay more attention to. One aspect which they've highlighted for consumers and for people is our consumption choices and how we need to make sure that we spend... We, that we consume less, for, for starters, but also that we waste less. And what's particularly interesting on the sort of governmental level, on the broader level, is that they really have made some quite radical suggestions, such as saying that we need to steer ourselves away from what they call this limited paradigm of economic growth. So what they're saying is that our current economic system is not really fit for fighting the loss of biodiversity that we're seeing and the consequences that that has for us. Absolutely. Lots of food for thought there in that report. Ajit Niranjan, DW's environment reporter, thank you very much for that assessment. Thank you.
But one of the warnings in the report has to do with a threat of insects, threat to insects such as bees, which are essential in the pollination of crops. Globally, we've been seeing an alarming development with bees disappearing and dying under mysterious circumstances. And there are fears that this could have major consequences for farmers. In Germany, a new app could help. Have a look. How many of the apple blossoms in her orchard will be pollinated this year? It's a question that fruit farmer Sabina Dalman asks herself time and again, because in northern Germany, as in other places, many bees are dying. Losing up to 40% of a colony is a regular occurrence. And those are the bees that you miss now when plants begin flowering, whether it's rapeseed or fruit. They're just not there. Dalman has turned to a new digital bee sharing platform for help. It brings together beekeepers and farmers online. The bees that will pollinate Dalman's trees arrive on a truck from the neighboring Netherlands. She ordered 500 colonies. And after taking a little while to acclimatize, they get straight to work. Platform operator Niels Gaba has assumed responsibility for the hardworking insects. It would be terrible for the startup's image if they came to harm. Disease prevention is a big issue. Bringing healthy bees plays a central role on the one hand. On the other, we have close agreements and binding regulations with the farmers to ensure the bees aren't damaged through the improper use of pesticides that could hurt or destroy them. That hasn't happened yet. So far, GABA has registered over a thousand beekeepers on his platform. The bees cost 60 euros per deployment. So, do they get the job done? We're lucky because our orchard is pretty far away from other orchards like it. So we thought about it and decided to take a chance on it, to give it a shot and see how things go. And so far, the cooperation has gone very well. We haven't been disappointed. The beekeepers get to keep the honey. It's still early days for the bee-sharing business in Germany, but there's potential demand for hundreds of thousands of colonies among farmers all over the country. Bees for hire could help improve harvests of all kinds of produce and at the same time provide their owners with a great source of income.